All right, everyone, it's the Grim Lord here, and as promised, this is Grim's Comics Corner with Spawn Origins Volume 6. So let's go ahead and get started. As you see, I have a lot to read. Collecting issues 33 to 38. Ah, oh, look at that art. Alan Moore did the story for 35. Greg Capullo, of course, uh, pencils and inks. Over the past few years, I've been trying to establish Spawn as the new creature of the night, but one whose background and training allows him to be more aggressive in terms of dealing with problems he encounters. That is not to say that, he, that because he is more violent than Batman that he's a better hero. Actually, in most cases, it does nothing but get him into further trouble. On the other hand, I've always been amused by the fact that Batman, aware that the Joker is a psychotic killer, continues to beat him up and send him back to jail over and over again, knowing that he'll eventually escape and kill again. Over the years, there have been literally hundreds of deaths at the hands of the Joker that could have been prevented if Batman made one crucial decision and terminated Joker's life. I'm not saying all heroes should kill, but in special situations, I think it's the logical thing to do. Which is why, way back in issue 5, Spawn did what he had to do to Billy Kincaid, which then guarantees that another child will not die at the hands of that murderer. Makes sense, doesn't it? Todd McFarlane, Spawn Letters, page issue, Spawn Letters, page issue 34. Oh, Violator. Shadows, part one. Ah, look at that. They're bringing Violator back. Chill night air blankets Manhattan as the clouds break up. As activity resumes its normal pace, the streets are slowly rid of all evidence of a downpour. Mixing with waste and litter, the rainwater gathers momentum. Through these black boughs, the streets of slow the excuse me. The streets slow off their unwanted garbage. Oh, Hold on. Oh, hold on. I didn't read this right. <clears throat> Chill night air blankets Manhattan as the clouds break up. The rain is over. As activity resumes its normal pace, the streets are slowly rid of all evidence of a downpour. Mixing with waste and litter, the rainwater gathers momentum, carving a paths to hundreds of scattered drainages. Through these black boughs, the streets slough off their unwanted garbage. It's time. First you'll feel the physical pain as I tear you apart, piece by piece. Limb by limb. Then I'll nail you where it counts, the, the most your one truly weak place. The heart. And while you're trying to figure out who's friend and foe, I'll be watching from the shadows, waiting for just the right moment. <laughs> oh, whoops, he says the thing that made you a spawn in the first place. See, it's sometimes tough to read these panels. A fiendish cackle reverberates through the reeking subterranean maze. Eventually, the sick laughter fades. The next evening. The debate has gone on for an hour now with no decision in sight. It is a topic... Excuse me, its topic is one that made the rounds a dozen times before. Is the presence of this dark Cape Guardian a blessing to the local vagrants, or a curse? If I stay here, you must be prepared for all-out war. Any time, any place, and some of your friends may be among the enemy. You think about that, and how deep you want to be involved in something you can't control. We already told you, Al. Those weren't our pals that tried to kill you. Bunch of yellow belly rats, that's all. I found another place I can go. It'd be safer for all of us. Can I say something? What a load of crap! See the entire Blood Feud miniseries. I have it, but we don't have it here. What's your problem, Bobby? You. What? Look, you want to run out on us again? Fine. That's your call. But don't try to pin any of this on us. We're not as fragile as you think. You see, Al, this trouble didn't start with you. What we go through has been a long... Excuse me. What we go through has been this way for a long time. The psychos, crime, and violence. None of that's gonna change. 
We'll still get beat up, shot at, and mugged by the bad guys. Hell, even the good guys pick on us, so forget that nursemaid crap. We'll survive. Always have. But I'm compounding these but I'm compounding these problems by being everyone's target. It's been a friggin' sea of freaks. Cops. Monsters. Hitmen. You name it. Every weirdo possible was trashing your home. It's not fair to any of you. Fair? Christ, we're society's garbage. We ain't never gonna get a fair shake. As for the intruders, that's your problem to fix. But they become yours too. Then do something about it, damn it! Stop the whining and take the bull by the horn! Remember, Chapel killed me too. If I had your power, excuse Remember, Chapel killed me too. If I had the power, I'd kill the pig if he weren't already dead. But I'll tell you something Chapel didn't act alone. One thing I know from my Vietnam days a good soldier only acts when ordered. Someone told him to pull the trigger. There's your target. Find the bugger who stole your identity and your life and everything you loved, including your wife. A moment of awkward silence. Then, thanks, Bobby. Elsewhere, the miracles of modern medicine are hard at work. Morning, how's our favorite guy doing today? Open wide, sweetie. There we go. We need to make sure you're not too hot in there. Lucky stiff. And here I was starting to feel sorry for you. Sir, what a nice surprise. Well, we'll leave you two alone. Now remember, you behave yourself, Twitchy. Mm-hmm. Why is it that when I get sick, the nurses are big, fat, and hairy, and look like bulldogs? Pure luck, sir. Look, Twitch, I've decided to put everything on the back burner for a while. Concentrate on your case exclusively. It's high time I figured out what that spawn's about. Ain't no one gonna touch my buddy and not pay for it in some way. Thanks, Grandma. Come on, seriously, the doc says there's still a chance for problems. Some serious. How you feeling, really? I hurt. Hurt like hell. But I need you to do me a favor. Forget about me. If Chief Banks is tied to some child killer, bring him down. I'm in pain, but nowhere as much as the parents of those slaughtered kids. Do you understand? Daddy! Daddy! Mom's out talking to the doctor. She'll be in shortly. How you doing, Dad? Cool, Dad. You look like Frankenstein. Mom's been crying lots, but I've been a big girl. I'll take care of it, partner. Boss? So, do me a favor. Oh, excuse me. Let's, let's try that a little... Let's try that again. You see how the panels are. Boss. Is that you, boss? So. There you are. Spawn, he's talking crazy like he's gonna leave or something. Just like you said. Do me a favor. Sure, boss. Anything. I'll do whatever you want. Get lost. But come back in a few days. I need some help setting a trap for our friend. The rebuilding seems to be proceeding as scheduled. Your office should be accessible in about five days. It better be, Tiffany. This distraction has put me behind on a few crucial matters. I still can't believe we let the hell spawn go. Remember what our leader said, Raphael. The spawn was only acting as we would have. Don't patronize me, Tiffany. That wasn't my intention. I can appreciate the fact that your sector has been disrupted, but things could be worse. At least the building's exterior appearance is normal. Mankind sees just another corporate entity, not their attentive protectors. Jason Wynn, Supreme Director of all U.S. intelligence agencies, paces his office, brooding over his current impasse. Somebody deep in the organization is trying to slit my throat, and now I've got Police Chief Banks cracking under the pressure. That file! How the hell did Spawn even get near it? The goddamn system should have created red herrings for him to chase. We know Fitzgerald's not Spawn, but he still has a stink about him. The whole setup is far too convenient. Excuse me, sir. I've checked with personnel and his transfer is completely legitimate. Everything's by the book. Get him. Ah, Mr. Fitzgerald, what a wonderful surprise. I've looked forward to this day for a long time. This is no coincidence, Banks. The file. Now this. At least it'll be that much easier to keep him under surveillance. He's been briefed and begins reporting to you tomorrow morning. 
unknown to when Terry Fitzgerald is preparing to play the same game. A few nights later, um, Al, Al Simmons? Some time ago, too many people knew far too much about him. They had knowledge that kept him trapped, with enough left over to eventually cost him his life. Now given a second chance, Al is ensured that those around him know only what he wants them to know. He's revealed just general information. One fact especially has become sacred, protected at all costs. His identity. No one would have any way of knowing it. What did you call me? How do you know who I am? I don't. Some stranger wanted me to find you, then I was supposed to say three things. Al Simmons, Jason Wynn, and something about Wanda. And that he wants to meet you. Why me? He didn't say, I'm just a messenger. Then go! Tell your stranger he knows where he can find me. Spawn releases his prey, knowing, it's w knowing it will scurry to its master. And when it does, Spawn will be waiting. For tonight, the shadows will live. He gives his target some space, no need to tip his hand yet. Psst, over here. Boss? Did he take the bait? I think so. Hopefully he's fallen like you wanted. What's next? A rapid grotesque transformation. Excuse me, I should read that. A rapid grotesque transformation. I'll take it from here, thank you. You've served my purpose. A heartbeat later, the sky is blanketed in red. Damn. I only lost sight of him for a second. The poor sap probably doesn't even know what he died for. But the kill's still fresh. The killer can't be far. It isn't. Spawn plummets 40 feet to the world that lies below. Your existence has become a farce. You've learned nothing about what you are. It's an honor to be chosen. A hell spawn, do you understand? An honor. You get something straight. Hell picked me, not the other way around. So I don't give a damn what you think. Then you're a fool, little boy. Because you don't have a choice. So you better care what I think. You see, I hear you're thinking about skipping town again. Well... I don't think that's such a wise decision, because we wouldn't want to have your servant bums looking like our slaughtered friend upstairs now, would we? The chain snaps to life, triggered by Spawn's rage. You stay away from them. Oh, I will. But only as long as you stay in this area. I want to know exactly where I can find you, day or night. Every sound, every shadow, think of me. Because one day... I'll come to obliterate you! That'll prove once and for all that none are as worthy of the spawn title as Hell's true citizens. After all, I can kill as well as you can. That corpse up above must have warmed your blood just seeing it. Remember how good you were at gutting people like that? No! But spawn knows it's true. As a government-sponsored assassin, he regularly invented new ways to dismember. He became an expert at snuffing lives out. A costume meshed with his flesh in symbiosis, creating an entity which he tries not to think about. It's that trait combined with anger which feeds his costume. And of course, they talk about that. <clears throat> a killer, basic and total. The uniform! How'd you trade it to morph this soon? It should still be incubating! Spawn is completely confused by the Violator's outburst. Tell me, who's helping you? Nearby, shrouded in darkness, a pair of inquiring eyes soak up the unfolding action. As the deadly assault continues, neither opponent is aware of the damage being done. Oh, again, you have to read. It says one of the comics where you have to literally go all the way down and then read, so we'll do that. Soon, one of the combatants is lost in the mur murky liquid. As the deadly assault continues, neither opponent is aware. Oh, no, I think it actually goes like this and then that. It's a little, again, a little confusing. It's even probably confusing to read in the actual book itself, which is just the way Todd did his panels, I guess. <clears throat> but it said the vast tunnels have been neglected by the city for years, so it doesn't take much before an already weakened waterline gives, exploding with countless tons of sewage. 
Like another piece of garbage caught in the deluge, the hero is slammed from side to side. Survival is his own pro only priority. He learns that his body, now composed of necroplasm, still needs oxygen. <gasps> and worse, the violator has vanished. Spawn expects, though, that he's somewhere in these sores, unharmed. And that he's at the mercy of that creature's next move. 6887. To be continued. Ripples. Man, look at that. The creature is rough, bristly, ghastly to the touch. It was born an eternity ago in the foulest corner of Hell's eighth level. It av its avowed purpose, as with its misshapen kin, is to serve the master, the male Bolgia. Deep in its shriveled heart, it knows the truth, that there is no reason for its existence. It denies this truth, defies it, and so has carved itself a mission. The creature fights for that mission with a fierceness and loyalty rarely seen among its kind. Eventually, the servitude led it into the master's inner circle. It was given the function of Spawn Warden, of indoctrinating the new officers in Hell's army. The duties were simple. But as each seceding Spawn went off on assignment, the monster's patience came close to its limit. Why were outsiders being given such opportunities to advance? Weren't the locals better conditioned for the great war with God? The question started as a joke, but with each failed hellspawn, the nagging doubts became more urgent. But the creature never showed its, app its apprehension. It didn't dare. The family would be disgraced, and he would certainly become an outcast. Thus did the centuries pass. His desire <clears throat> to, be to please the master became insatiable. He became far more vicious than necessary. The title Violator was bestowed, and worn like a badge of honor. Those doubts, though, caused him to stray oddly on a particular mission. He fell from favor and was banished to Earth. Now Violator's only hope is to beat the current Hellspawn both physically and emotionally. <laughs> Just now that plan has hit a few bumps. Their most recent struggle had barely begun when they were interrupted by a ruptured pipeline. Some crazy human had then seen, had then seen fit to save the demon from drowning. That's it! Run away, Earth scum! Who needs your damn help anyway? I can breathe the air or water! The silhouette vanishes, leaving only the echo of splashing footsteps. You're lucky I'm not in the mood for casual dismemberment. Or any other clowning around. The grotesque transformation lasts but a few heartbeats, left in the demon's place in its best attempt being human. <sniffs> Something's wrong, a big time. Ain't no way Spawny's uniform should have transmuted this fast. The friggin' thing could have done me some serious damage, which only makes my original intent of destroying him from a distance more valid. It's a slight curveball, but nothing I can't hit. Six days will pass before he acts again. Nana, Nana! Cyan, hello, sweetheart. My, my, aren't we a big girl these days? Hi, Grandma, how have you been feeling lately? The doctors, excuse me, that's a little different. Let's try that again. Hi, Grandma, how have you been feeling lately? The doctors said that, no, no, down, Mommy. Okay, okay, what a squirmy kid. Oh, I'm fine, dear. Those doctors don't know everything. Nothing your visits won't cure. How are things with you and Terry? Not bad. He just transferred into a new department. He was looking for a change after that whole murder fiasco. And I'm up to my neck trying to organize this upcoming fundraiser for the Children's Society. You've always been so generous, Wanda. I hope you never lose that. As one child settles into her grandma's sweet embrace, another ambles unprotected through an urban cesspool. These streets have, for all intents and purpose, become his home. Yo, Tyrone, what it is? It's the man. Tugged at, pulled, the young boy barely pays attention. At ten years of age, there's very little he hasn't seen. Hey, boy, what? Oh, excuse me. He is just another of society's forgotten victims. I've been waiting for you. You've been messing with me, Tyrone. I don't like that. See, I got me a reputation. And ain't no one gonna play with that. Especially not some punk-ass kid. You tell him, stinky! So what are we gonna do about this? I've got an idea. The going rate on my stuff is 300 bucks, but for you... I'm going to charge only 600. Oh! Oh, yes. Think quick, boy. 
Ain't no one around to help you choose. Though he never let others push him around, Tyrone doesn't have time to resist. So the deal is done. Good. Now get the hell out of here. I got me another appointment. For Stinky, that appointment is a short walk down the street in a building marked only by a single red light dangling above a black steel door. He shuffles past the maze of aisles, l aisles littered with pornographic magazines and videos unimaginable to most. At last, through a curtain and underlit hallway, he enters his private co confines. Come on, come on. Oh yes, do it. Do it to me good. I plan to. The noise is created by the wrestlers purposely mask the activities of those hidden behind these walls. Muffling their pleasure. And pain. Twisted in between purgatory and limbo is a vast wasteland of hell's eighth level. The shadow of this black void creeps far closer to the earthly realm than we care to think about. It's here that the armies of the damned are assembled and trained, awaiting the signal to begin the glorious war against the heavens, Armageddon. That eventual war is the only purpose for this creature, the Mount Bolgia, one of the high-ranking devils. He oversees a swelling sea of troops and occasionally chooses officers to lead them. His latest hell spawn and training is coming along as planned. Delude yourself! Oh, excuse me. Delude yourself, all you wish, Simmons. But you cannot run away from yourself. There is a reason you were chosen from among the tortured millions. Death, evil, blackness. Those seeds were planted in you at birth. Soon, very soon, all shall come to fruition. The situation in Bosnia intensifies as neither Bosnian diplomats nor their Serbian counterparts seem willing to resume peacekeeping talks. The president's much-publicized visit to Bosnia was cut unexpectedly short three fewer days than planned. After the Bosnian president walked out during our president's presentation regarding the ongoing border dispute, citing favoritism towards the Serbs, the Bosnian president advised the committee that Bosnian partic participation would resume only if the U.S. president was removed from the peace negotiations. Closer to home, police in New York City are still investigating a gruesome murder in the Red Light District. There are no reported suspects at this time. As the interminable drug war in New York City escalates, another pawn falls victim to a gruesome attack in a porn theater. Police had to resort to dental records in an attempt to identify the body. Wow. Sources indicate that the victim had over a dozen broken bones. A blood spatter expert begins his investigation today in an attempt to determine what, if any, weapon was used to sever the victim's head. Officials are baffled by the extent of the mutilation and cannot determine if the attack was committed by a human or some wild animal. Even though the recent vampire case has been closed, police are not ruling out the possibility of a connection. Is this just another meaningless crime or a revenge hit for a drug deal gone bad? Before a motive can be suggested, police say the victim's identity must first be determined. Credit where it's due. Sounds fair to me. Big surprise! Our overwhelmingly elected president has put his foot in his mouth once again. This time in his proposal for ending the Bosnian conflict went over like a lead balloon. The president is wasting our valuable time trying to make his mark in history. I guess he's not planning on returning for another four years. So this would be a good opportunity. Instead of getting the job done, as this citizen would like to do, he pussyfoots around the issue, accomplishing nothing. Back at home, we know how to deal with similar problems. For instance, last night's gruesome murder in New York. Obviously, this guy, another drug-pushing punker mafia th thug, got what was coming to him. He screwed someone over and paid the price, short, sweet, and to the point. The president could learn something from this. At 2 a.m., Intelligence Director Jason Wynn had assumed he'd be able to get in another productive all-nighter. Manipulation of national security missions is best done from, <clears throat> best done far from the light of day. Who dares? Ah, deception and deceit gives me a warm, squishy feeling. Doesn't matter. What does is that you'll be working for me starting today. And I'm hoping it'll be permanent. You see, I've done my homework on you, Jason, my boy. You're perfect for my needs, and whether you know it or not, we have a few common enemies. So are you in or what? Oh, come to think of it, you don't have a choice. But that's your problem. I don't know how you got past security, but you just made a fatal mistake. Forget about the phones, they're dead. Speaking of which, you have a thorn in your side name, 
Uh, no, he's saying something else. He's saying, speaking of which, you have a thorn in your side named Spawn. Combine that with Terry Fitzgerald, Police Chief Banks, ex uh, yeah, Billy Kincaid, etc., etc. And I think you get my drift. I'm listening. Good. Oh, your office camera surveillance, your donut eating Renikops are seeing a perfectly normal picture. You alone, all by yourself. Any other security indicators would also be blind to my presence. Just a little magic thing I do. You probably wouldn't understand. Try me, you'll be surprised. I'm hoping. So here's the gig. Our buddy Spawn, I need him weak. Uh, it's acceptable. Ripe, if you will, for the kill. Uh, but we can't do it hands-on. This has got to be a strictly long-distance brain screw. Because right now, a suit of armor has advanced too much. really pisses me off. So I need some assistance, which is where you come in. I'm familiar with most of your past activities. Quite impressive, really. Killing, maiming, spying, warring, all the good stuff. But I can offer what it is that you're really thirsting for. Power. No more pandering to the president. Him and his administration are dumber than the sack of hammers. They don't have a clue about your secret agenda. Like this file. Hmm. Naughty, naughty little boy. A full-scale air sweep of a friendly army engineered by one of America's enemies. In return, they get a secret line of credit with a struggling defense contractor. They get to continue their wars against your allies. Your intelligence agency's more essential than ever. And you come out with 12 million bucks laundered kickbacks in your Swiss account. Get to your point. Terry Fitzgerald. I see by this other file that he recently transferred to your office. Perfect. It'll make things easier. I want you to befriend him, gain his confidence, while at the same time do a number on those he cares about. Sort of Jekyll and Hyde thing. That means his wife, kid, granny, whoever, push them hard. It'll drive old Spawny simply batty, which is a good thing. And when the time is right, I'll let you in on something, like who our hero really is. It's going to give you a heart attack. Promise. His tests have all come up negative. The injuries are healing satisfactorily. His, record, his recovery is on target. Thump. Whoa, Mama, what have we got here? Okay, Burke, try this nice and easy. Let's see. All right. Now, this is a backwards... This is kind of a backwards C. <clears throat> Good day, miss. I couldn't help but notice that attractive breast... I mean dress you're wearing, and I was wondering if... Sorry, but I'm on my way to see somebody. Have a nice day. Uh, sure, I'll be seeing you around. Wow. Thought. Buddy, I've just seen the eighth wonder of the world. Curves like a racetrack I could run my hands all over for days. Hello, sir. And did she have a pair of... Oops. You know... I don't think you've ever met my wife, Helen. Uh, hello, it's nice to finally meet you. Unfortunately, I'm late picking up Trudy from school. You take it easy, darling. Try and get some rest. <laughs> I'm such an ass. She's a classy, beautiful gal, Twitch. You're very lucky. Thank you, sir. So, anything new to report on Chief Banks? Yeah, I was able to get my hands on his phone records. And ever since he received our note, he's been making a lot of calls to a confidential number at CIA headquarters. I haven't figured out who'd even give Banks the time of day there, but judging from the hours when he's calling, he doesn't want that many people to know about it. Jason Wynn's been mulling over the dwarfish clown's visit for the past 20 hours. The pest knew too much. The proposal made sense. Though it would back him into a corner. Damn. Bring! Mr. Wynn, the president is on line one. M Mr. President? Afternoon, Jason. I want to thank you personally for your assistance in getting us out of that little situation in Bosnia. I've been advised that you spearheaded the resolution. I owe you one. Thanks. Uh, you're welcome, sir. What mission? I didn't sanction any. Bring! I take it you've heard from your pal. Well, consider it a little preview of things to come. A down payment, if you will. Hope you're clear on the situation now. Toodaloo, buddy! Say hello to Terry for me. A particular New York alley. I don't know what Violator's thinking. Attack me, then just disappear? Doesn't make sense. Oh no? Then you're not paying attention. Meaning? 
He's trying to confuse you, keep you distracted, and when he does that, your instincts take over, which is what he wants. You see, you and he are two peas in a pod on some levels. I'm not like him! Really? Your latest actions say otherwise. Stinky was preying on children, turning them into his own kind. I just sent out a loud message to others like him. Precisely. And that meant using your training. He didn't stand a chance against you, Al. Can't you see? Hell wants you to act like this. In some cases, they're right. Damn you, Al. You're making this too easy for them. Here, let me enlighten you a bit. That little boy Tyrone you were so concerned about, he runs those streets in his neighborhood. He's been in and out of detention halls since he was six. Been selling guns since seven. He was directly involved in two murders, but his age allowed him to circumvent any severe punishment. And he wasn't being strong-armed by Stinky. Just the opposite. The boy's drug business had been, has been slipping. He was just looking at some new samples. Your solution to all this? Kill what you don't understand. Let your ignorance rule those government-trained homicidal instincts. What do you want from me anyways, Cog? For you to focus. Use your power wisely. Like it or not, you were assassinated under orders. And stop the denials. What you were is still a part of you. Hell means to exploit that. This isn't how it was supposed to turn out. I know, but it's still your problem. Because like it or not, there's a host of others tangled in your web. Ignoring them would weave a life without purpose. Your friends, loved ones, would fall prey to much evil. As the day comes to a close, Terry Fitzgerald finds himself alone at his new office at CIA headquarters. Finally, he has a chance to pursue his only reason for requesting a transfer to Jason Wynn's de department in the first place. Finding out what his new department head is really up to. The guy is slick. Retracing his tracks won't be easy, especially with all the security checks involved. But there has to be something here I can use. His international activities look clean. Almost too clean. Then a noise behind him snaps Terry back to attention. Ah, there you are. Um... Yes, sir. I was just finishing up, uh, more work? I've been hearing how hard you've pushed yourself in such a short time. Your reports are very thorough, and systems analysis says you helped modify an encrypted access route for our field ops. It's much appreciated. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, there's one other thing. Someone within this organization has been pushing non-sanctioned activities while at the same time constructing a paper trail pointed in my direction. I'd like you to help me uncover this. It'd get some pressure off my back, and I'd be indebted to you. Since you're new, my cynical mindset tells me I can trust you more than the others right now. To be continued. Okay, set up part one. And it's definitely a setup. Oh, man. Early during his recovery, there had been a few scary reports that had, had had his fellow policemen saying prayers. But now, except for a slight limp and the sling cradling a fractured elbow, Detective Twitch Williams appears ready to return to the force. Hardest hit by Twitch's absence was his partner, Sam Burke. Normally a pillar of unwavering strength, Sam has been half-heartedly waiting through his case files for weeks, except for that one personal case. Now reunited, the Laurel and Hardy duo are once again like two little kids at summer camp. I swear, Twitch, I had nothing to do with this. The guys did it on their own. Sure, sure, whatever you say, sir. Come on, you think I'd be able to plan something like this? The five dozen jelly-filled mega donuts are a coincidence? So I had a, a little input. He's right, Twitch. We did this ourselves. We just wanted you to know we were, were behind you, buddy. For Twitch, who had been anxious to return to work for days, another 20 minutes of socializing seemed an eternity. One case in particular was gnawing away at him. Nice to have you back, Lieutenant Williams. Your presence was greatly missed by us all. Thank you, Chief Banks. I appreciate the kind words. With a subtle wink to Burke, Twitch lets his partner know that it's time to get down to business. How lovely. Your sincerity is overwhelming. A man gets ripped apart and that's all the sympathy you can muster? Do you have something on that feeble mind of yours that you're trying to say? I have plenty to say, sir. Then be a man about it and say it to my face. Oh, I will. Believe me, I will. 
You just have to be a bit more patient. Your time is coming. Is that a threat? You call it what you want now. Excuse me, some of us like to work around here. Slam! Trouble? Can't tell. Well, the word is Burke's been sniffing around lately, mostly in your direction. Heard he even got some of your phone records. You might want to watch your back. Thanks, Eric. That's very useful info. Sorry, Twitch. What for, sir? I still haven't nailed down the connection between Banks and that kid killer, Kincaid. It's there. I know it. I just keep hoping that if I pressure him, he'll eventually crack. That you stayed on this case in my absence means a lot to me, sir. I'm sure it's been a ton of work doing it alone. What do you mean they're afraid of what? You. Your potential, to be exact. The tradition of the Spawn is a very sordid story, Al. Each of the Spawn came through their baptism of fire with varying degrees of success. Some fought their new status. Some accepted it, too, willingly. But none were ever able to reverse the situation. I guarantee you, they will not let you be the first. You know what, Cog? I don't give a crap what they had planned for me. No one's going to dictate what I do. Unfortunately, Al, they already have. Meanwhile, you've learned how to deal with the cost of using your powers, how to kill more efficiently, and how to ignore the consequences. Each being a positive in your training here on Earth. But now there's an X factor they've never dealt with before, which makes you dangerous to them. Your uniform. What? I'm sure you by now that you've seen and felt transformation of your outfit. That shouldn't have happened, at least not yet. It should have been another seven years. Hold on, there we go. What are you saying, that I'm some super spawn? I don't know, none of us do. But the answers lie within you, search them out. Use the costume to your advantage, not theirs. Old man, besides being crazy, you haven't a clue how... Don't I? Then, everything comes both hellish and familiar as Spawn's brain is speared by a kaleidoscope, kaleidoscopic array of images. Scattered fragments of the past flash helter-skelter, some of them arranged in sharp focus. They pivot around the human nightmare who was his boss. Al's strong will collided with that of his superior, too often for either of them to tolerate. The man, blinded by his lust for power, demanded to be in ultimate control. That his whim determined the fate of all situations. All participants. He gave the orders. He sanctioned the kills. The killers. He controlled chapel. When Al became a, bro a bother, he was eliminated. For this man, this devil, always had to win. Win! Damn you! A heartbeat later, the images retreat. Spawn is unsettled, but his neural parasite costume is invigorated. The symbiotic liver livery, thriving on the sensory input, is pumped and ready for its next challenge. Its host is thoroughly wiped. You okay? Fine. Then it's your, then it's time you begin. Your mission should be clear. Jason Wynn's office at the CIA. As I've been saying, Fitzgerald, security has been breached recently. I'd like you to head up the reorganization of our data security systems. The agency must not be compromised again. Understood? Yes, sir. As the week goes on, Jason attends to other annoying matters. I'm slowly losing patience, Banks. Tell me again, without l lapsing into paranoia, how one of your subordinates could possibly know of Kincaid. I don't know, he just does. He has to be the one who gave me the note. Since you received a file too, Burke must have something to implicate you as well. Fool, no mere detective accumulated this information. He would have had no way to gain access. Besides, your mass vigilante Spawn delivered mine personally. Spawn? What does he have to do with Burke? You disappoint me, Banks. Your officer is some sort of diversion. Our headache is sitting in your backyard. I suggest you act rather swiftly on this. I will now. You can count on me. Not so far. Police Chief Lewis Banks knows the consequence of failing a man like Wynn. Yes, she sure is a big girl. You know, yesterday science said Grandma for the first time. Grandma! Let me think, what else? Terry's still working long hours at his new job. And things are coming together at the shelter. We just received a huge anonymous donation. Oh, Wanda, that's wonderful. Well, I've got some good news, too. You know that problem I've been having with Jonathan's government pension? Well, I just received a special delivery today saying the payments will continue as scheduled and that the IRS has closed the file. They've also apologized for any inconvenience they've caused me. It's such a breath of fresh air, I was so worried I might have to sell the house. 
Like a long shadow, Wynn's presence creeps into the lives of Terry and his family. New York City's 12th Precinct. Burke! I just heard the, that Banks and a couple of his ass kissers just took off to the alleys. He was going off to deep end about that vigilante spawn. Don't know what it's about, but seeing that it's your case... Thanks, Bob. Cripes! That idiot Banks, he's gonna get his throat split. He's supposed to keep out of the alleys. We never gave him Spawn's file. He has no idea what he's walking into. I've gotta get to him before Spawn does. You coming? Every step of the way, sir. Don't expect me to wait for you. Thanks for caring, sir. Elsewhere, Jensen, pull up over there. Evening, gentlemen. I'd like a few moments of your time. We're looking for a man who goes by the name of Spawn. Need to ask a few questions. Don't know about any prawns. We said Spawn, wise guy. He's been fairly active in this area. Thought we might have a chat with the boy. Ugh. That's enough, Jensen. I'm sure we've made our point. We can continue on our own now. You pukes. Gonna kick some puppies, too? Screw off. Please, let's not lower ourselves. As the officers melt into the alley's shadows, one of the homeless stands transfixed. Dark emotion begins to boil. In life, as a CIA-trained assassin, Al Simmons lived for these moments. They're what gave him a purpose, what made him whole. And though he realizes this is a distraction from his main target, Jason Wynn, it should serve quite nicely as a warm-up. Doesn't look good, Chief. It's been an hour and we ain't seen nothing. Then we'll spend another hour until we... Bank spots a makeshift fence where there shouldn't be one. Crash! Then, a two-block walk through near darkness brings him to a dead end. Jeez. Well, well, looks like we found our friend's little hideout. Get a load of that. It's some kind of throne. My God, they think he's some kind of king. Are they twisted? No, just thankful. For Christ's sakes, how'd you... Wh where's Jensen Smith? Alive. That's enough. I told you to stay away from me, you and your men. Didn't the file mean anything? Are you that suicidal? I don't know what you're talking about. I thought you and Burke were... Freeze! The file. You didn't deliver it. Why? Too much interest in crap in it. Isn't that right, Chief? Like stuff about your buddy Kincaid. Kincaid! What do you have to do with that butcher? Stop it, Spawn. You both have a lot to answer for. Tell me now! Stop it! It was when... What'd he say? He whispered something. Spawn says nothing, yet again he's been reminded who the true enemy is. Okay, tough guy, I'm gonna have to drag both your butts downtown. We've been through this before. Your guns can't hurt me. I know that, but let's just see how fast you regenerate your head after I blow it off your shoulders. Kind of difficult to run away with no eyeballs. Spawn hadn't considered that scenario. Scat! Catech! But before either detective has a chance to defend against the costume, it and its bearer are gone. Christ! The moments have become harder to find, but today Wanda Terry and their daughter Cyan are quietly becoming a family together. I'm just getting more confused by it all. Now that Wynn's bought me into his inner circle, if I find out if he suspects me or something, or if he's telling the truth that he's being set up, either way, I'm screwed. No, that I know! You're right. If someone's pointing all the incriminating evidence his way, we're back to square one. Unless Wynn can help us. But if he's lying, we can't afford to let him know what you've been doing behind his back. Which makes his friendliness towards you even creepier. It seems like we just keep hitting walls. Meanwhile, I got some good news today. We just received a huge anonymous donation at the Children's Society. Larger than I could ever imagine. It looks like we'll finally be able to start that urgent care ward at the hospital. After everyone's hard work, this is a godsend for the center. That's fantastic. You've done a great job, sweetheart. I don't say that enough. I'm proud of how you handled everything. Hopefully that donation is just the start of more good things. Unbeknownst to both, the benefactor with a heart of gold is Wynn himself. Along with the check, this person enclosed a note expressing his love for all children and adding that he has none of his own. More! Dada! More! Okay, kiddo, stop squirming. You're gonna kick... Terry! Ugh. Um... Oh, I'm sorry. That's the wrong... Terry, um, chuckle, you okay? Cyan, look what you did. Now you won't be able to have any brothers or sisters. Very funny. 
Oh, he says something. Oh, yeah. Okay, we got it. Again, me do again. A calm before the storm. Hello, Jason. What do you want? Everything. My wife, my life, normality. What are you? Exactly what you made me. Nothing. You see, I'm here to even a score. It's my turn to kill you. But before I send you to hell, I want to know why I was eliminated. You're insane. Crap. Wrong answer. And what makes this even more sickening is that you still haven't a clue who I am. The pool of blood you swim in has diluted your memory. You won't get ten feet from here before you're a dead man. Snap! Wind's arm breaks like a twig. Time you learn something. They can't kill what's already dead. Suddenly the doors are forced open. A dozen heat sensor AK-50s are aimed at Spawn's temple. Take a step back, Spawn, nice and slow. No! Not you too, Terry. Is everyone controlled by this devil? It's not that simple. Next issue, Betrayal and Pain. Setup Part 2. Uh-oh. It couldn't be. Not this. Not now. Since his return from the dead, nothing has made much sense. His twisted new existences continue to unravel chaotically, each day bringing new pain. The only split second of time flashed between his death and initiation. Ah, gotta breathe, guys. Sorry about that. As an agent of hell, five years had slipped away on Earth, so this creature once known as Lieutenant Al Simmons was now drifting emotionally, lost in time. His wife remarried to his best friend, no less. They have a child, something he'd been incapable of giving her. Alliances had changed, and his identity was now forever lost, exchanged for an unholy shell of necroplasmic goo. His only refuge has been his past career, that of a covert assassin in the service of the U.S. intelligence. Recently recovered memories gave him the face of his own murderer. He decided that it was time to exercise a few internal demons by killing his former boss. Jason Wynn, the man who gave the order. The man who, in a bizarre twist of fate, had a hand in creating this new hell spawn. He had hoped to make Wynn's death excruciatingly slow. Revenge was all Al had left. He had hoped it would bring a momentary res respite from this nightmare. But now, instead, things have become even more unbearable. You traitor! Flanked by a dozen biotech security guards, Terry Fitzgerald stands defiantly in what little light there is in Jason Wynn's CIA office. Shut up! You haven't the right to make accusations. Now stand back slowly and keep your hands where I can see them. Killing him won't give us any more answers. He's more valuable alive. Oh, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Well, I'm not sure if... I think this is going like this. I, I don't know. It's hard to tell. Okay, yeah. No, it's, it's this way and then that way. All right. He says, damn you, Fitzgerald, shoot him. This isn't a negotiation. And then he says, killing him won't give us any answers. He's more valuable alive. The sight of his best friend protecting Wynn sickens him. Maybe you should just kill them both, Spawn thinks, right here, right now. He's got the power. Why not use it to blast this whole friggin' floor halfway across the city? Guards, listen up. Fitzgerald is hereby relieved of his command. I'm in charge now, so quickly, before he escapes into the shadows. Fire! Hurry, the lights turn them on. I don't want him in the darkness. The file cabinet comes from the right, blindsiding the troops. Already Spawn has moved undetected. Damn it, call for backups now. I want this entire floor section off. This bastard's not leaving alive. Wanna bet? He's on the left now. What's he, some kind of ghost? He's moving too fast, Wynn. Get out of the way. Too late. I'll be back for you, Terry. Like a lead balloon, they fall. Sensing impending disaster, the Hellspawn's cloak attempts to form wings. A jutting section of the building renders that effort useless. Screaming, the current occupants of the 17th floor scatter. Security forces have been alerted. Ugh. Ugh. Not dead yet? Good. I didn't want your pain to end too quickly. Who are you? Someone who got in your way. Who didn't count. Just stay calm. In there, hurry, please. Don't move, both of you. I'm Jason Wynn, Special Security, Sector 12. He's the intruder. Give me your gun. What for? I need a sacrificial pig. A beat later outside the office. Help! The creature's gone mad! He's killed the guard! 
The trap set when retreats. That's him, the murderer. Team Red. This is the commander. Increase the port above and below. He's headed for stairwell 9. I want all exits secured now. Bring Team Orange in the kill position. He's got nowhere to go, but down. Jesus, he just jumped the rails. We're losing him. Crash. He said something around the 12th floor. I want three units on it. Block the exits and monitor the elevator shafts. The west wing has been sealed for construction. We don't have to worry about windows or enclosed spaces. He's heading into no man's land. Stop. You're completely surrounded. You have three seconds to... Damn it. Taylor, what's going on down there? He's out. Went through the wall. What? God damn it. We don't even have outside reinforcements yet. They're coming. Where is he now? Landed hard south on the roof of the Merrill Lynch building. Not detecting any motion. The target may be injured. I doubt it. He's one of those costume freaks. They don't like to die easy. I've, get the, I've got the SWAT teams and security troops headed to his position. Perfect. If he flinches, shred him. Contact point. This is Commander Cooper of the U.S. Army. We spotted your target. What are your orders? Terminate on site. Affirmative. 10-4. Chopper 2, deploy tracking missiles. We'll corner the target to the east, then fall out. You follow behind the clip you follow behind for the clear shot. Target locked in. Two seconds. One. The party's over. Bingo! Elimination complete. Good work, men. We'll let the CIA and civilians clean up this mess. See you back at home base. 12th Precinct, New York City. Hours later. I never thought I'd see this day when those sworn to the people's protection had become the enemy. That file we gave to Internal Affairs should have stopped Chief Banks from ever making a mockery of his office again. And it wasn't just the Kincaid stuff. There was ample evidence to force his resignation. Someone wielding a hell of a lot of clout. It's been less than 20 hours and Banks has already been cleared of any and all wrongdoing. I know, it's a bunch of crap. Should have taken them three weeks just to organize the questioning. Took them three weeks to clear us of involvement with Kincaid's dead body. And now they're saying that Bugger Banks is clean. Cripes, this whole system has turned dirty. So it appears, sir. My guess is that someone at CIA has a very big hand in this. Don't I know it? That building that was just attacked belongs to government security, and by coincidence, it's the same place Banks has been directing his panic calls. So what are the odds our pal Spawn had something to do with this? I bet my reputation. Me too. Spawn was trying to get some info out of Banks, and disappears. Then bang! The chief's mysterious sympathetic ear is attacked. Things do seem to be getting quite involved, but if everyone's being bought off, what's the good of this what's the good of this line of inquiry? Maybe we can Burke I applaud you on your efforts to banish me, but by now you've become painfully aware how useless that was. You see, boy, there's a natural pecking order in life. Some of us are meant for grandeur, while others like yourself flail tragically through life amounting to nothing. Or, to put it more clearly, you're out of your league with your neck stuck out, and now it's about to get chopped. You've been a pain to me for over four years, but no more! Police! Can you be a bit more melodramatic? Damn it, Burke. This isn't a joke any longer. Though I'd dearly love to fire your ass right now, that would raise some eyebrows, especially now. No, I'm a patient man. I'll put up with you two for the time being. But I swear, if either of you even sneezes wrong, I'll make sure you lose everything. Your jobs, your pensions, you name it. In the meantime, I suggest you look for another line of work, because as soon as the, heart die, the heat dies down around here, you're done. And once you're on your own, if I were you, I'd check over my shoulder regularly, because I'm not about to forget what you tried to do to me. Um, excuse me. Screw you. You don't threaten me or my friend, understand? You want to fight us, then be my guest, because you know what? I'm not afraid of your kind. See, I've kept a copy of your file as a backup, and if anything happens to me or Sam, I've arranged for it to hit every major newspaper and talk show in this country. And believe me, I don't bluff. As for your pathetic attempts to intimidate us, let me refresh, you on, refresh your memory on one little matter. I'm a sharpshooter, best in the city. You want a bullet dead through each eye? You want a bullet dead center through each eye? Then push me. Go get him, Twitch. Because I made a pledge years ago to rid society of scum like you. Damn, Twitch. We now shift to the suburbs, Queens, a short time later. Well, thank you, Wanda, for such a beautiful day. The fresh air sure felt good, though I'm sorry I couldn't walk the park as... I couldn't walk the park quite as fast as you two. An afternoon away from the house is a pleasure. I don't get too often, but I do enjoy... 
Cyan, please, not so hard. You have to be gentle when you give Great Granny a hug. Gracious, I do love this child of yours, Wanda. Always making me feel so good. Mmm. Well, she just gets so excited about coming over here. Isn't that right, sweetie? I appreciate you... I think it's a... Gra I don't know. I appreciate you spending a bit more time. Too bad Terry couldn't make it. Grandma! Yeah, he must be working late tonight. You know, trying to impress the new boss. Hopefully he'll come next visit. That'd be nice. I miss his company too, but I know how busy you both are. I wish it wasn't true. Between my charity work and some new classes, I can't remember the last time Terry and I just sat down and turned on the TV. Continue our live coverage of tonight's bombing at New York. City, uh, it's, uh, ooh, hold on. We're gonna have to breathe a little bit here. Just give me a minute. Okay. Continue our live coverage of tonight's bombing at New York City's Merrill Lynch building and the reported assault on the CIA headquarters next door, police sources are cautiously optimistic that no one died in this attack on the nation's largest brokerage institution. The upper two stories of this building, which housed the gym and cafeteria, had already been secured for the night. It is believed that no employees were working late in any other areas and most have been located at their homes. The White House denies reports that an as, a, as, as yet unidentified terrorist group had staged the event as a rejection of the administration's peace negotiations in the Middle East. Off the record speculation from my anonymous sources is that a homegrown terrorist group was blowing a loud raspberry at the president's Middle East peace effort. At the same time, frenzied spin doctors are quick to dispel any hint of a connection to the Oklahoma City incident. Just the actions of another deranged individual, they tell us, which is to say nobody has a clue. Confusing matters even further is the rapid involvement of our nation's military forces. Some eyewitnesses say it was the presence of the helicopters that triggered the bombings, while others maintain the damage was done before their arrival. In either case, every agency in the city is now on alert for possible follow-up action. Meanwhile, all eyes turn to the White House for someone, anyone, to explain it all for us. Are you kidding me? This isn't a case of whacked-out idiots looking for attention. No, sir! What we're looking at is retaliation. Some group is sending a message to those who hide in the shadows playing dopey spy games with our tax dollars. No one is admitting anything, but anyone who thinks the CIA attacking the Merrill Lynch bombing are unrelated is either ignorant or stupid. This whole thing smells rotten. Worse than that, the president and his aides are stonewalling. Didn't we elect these guys because the previous bunch were claiming deniability too often? So now we have the army, the financial community, and the central intelligence boys running around an ant farm... But for a chance, we've got a magnifying glass on them. I guarantee that someone's hiding something, and this time we just might find out what it is. Elsewhere. You're a smart man. You'll understand how all this can compromise people in our positions. The people we represent need deniability regarding the sensitive arrangements we've all made. They don't like surprises or attention. The media is crawling all over this one, worldwide. That's not good for anyone's business, and frankly, they don't think you're worth the risk can't blame them. I've been saying you're trash for years now. So let me make this clear. You're alone. Anyone shines a light in our direction, they'll find nothing but distance between you and our associates. You're in free fall, Wynn. And this time there isn't a parachute you come out of. This one intact, it'll be a miracle. Uh, hold on. Let me try that again. That was a little weird. You're in free fall, Wynn, and this time there isn't a parachute. You'll come out of this one intact. Or excuse me, you come out of this one intact, it'll be a miracle. So you get some rest, because this may be the last chance to feel all caught and secure. Coddled and secure. After all, we're all expendable. I'm just glad that my clients have finally discovered that about you. And what's even sweeter? You did it all by yourself. Let's get out of here, guys. Boss, we poked around on our own and things don't look good. Several agents overseas say they're near code blue status. The fear of publicity has everyone walking on eggs. At the current rate, we expect almost half of our covert missions to be disrupted by week's end. Listen, you have every one of those pigs understand it. I'll have this fire out in a heartbeat. Remind them it's not wise to have the U.S. Army against them on any of this. Finally alone, it takes almost two hours for Wynn to fall asleep. His, mind res his mind's resistance succumbs grudgingly to his body's demands. My, my. Don't we look like a little angel lying there? What? Hey, stud, remember me? Of course you do. Anyways, it seems like you've gotten yourself into a bit of a tight squeeze again. Well, you're lucky I've taken a shine to you. See, out of the goodness of my black heart, I'm going to do you another huge favor. Remember Spawn's attack on your office? Well, it'll appear exactly like the work of a terrorist from abroad. Another trade center bombing, if you will. No one will be the wiser. I know, I know. 
You want to kiss me? Well, let's not spoil the moment. Oh, and I should mention, in all honesty, that you've been doing a decent job of pushing Spawn's buttons. Driving men sane. That's great. If I push too hard, and he'll kill you in a heartbeat. We can't have that. You're too important. You know, I've seen Hell's Dossier on you. Pure evil's a rare commodity among you humans. And pal, you are way off the charts. We need you intact. So push Spawn, but try and keep some distance. Evening, Mr. Wynn. Time for your medicine. Hope you've been getting some rest. I'm trying. Terry and Wanda's home. Poor Cyan. Almost fell asleep during her bath. I shouldn't have kept her up so late. I was hoping Terry would phone to say goodnight to her. Maybe the bedroom phone recorder has something since this phone is out of power again. I wish she'd remember to hang it up. Uh, now who could that be? Coming! Wanda, please don't be afraid. I've only come to talk. Oh my god, don't hurt, don't, don't hurt me, stay away. Don't you hear me? I want to talk. No! The phone. I'm sorry, I can't let you do that. Help, somebody! Damn you, Wanda, I just want a moment, just one minute of your time, but you can't yell. Listen to me, this is about Terry, he's not what you think, he's been deceived, both of us lied. You can't run away from that. Don't you understand? He's protecting my murderer. He didn't care about me. It was you he wanted. But he doesn't love you like I do. What are you talking about? I traded everything to be with you again. Everything. Now, now I terrify you. Well, I promised I wouldn't hurt you again. Remember that? At Coney Island? How? Why are you doing this? How do you know what Al told me? Who are you? Don't you know? No, no, you aren't my dead husband. You aren't my husband. He's dead. Damn you. Stop torturing me, please. He's dead. He's dead. I was. Instantly, Spawn calls to mind a hundred details that only Al Simmons would know. Intimate moments. Private jokes they shared. Any of which would make her believe. Mommy? Uh. God, no. Baby, please not now. Why are you crying? Did he make you sad? Don't hurt her, please. Not my baby. I'll do whatever you want. Just leave her alone. Does my mama know you? I thought she did. Not anymore. As he leaves, Wanda leans back, accidentally tripping the answering machine. Wanda, this is Terry. Get out of the house, now! Do you hear me? Now! Spawn attacked us. He's gone nuts. He might be coming your way. He knows us. Christ, he's crazy. You've got to get away. Hell's torture, his torture, continues. Yeah! The Freak. Hmm. So this is it. This is the poison legacy my life has left me. The decayed estates are all there is of my despised inheritance. This dismal place chandeliered with mad dog bottle glass and tiled with a mosaic of, string, of syringe and human filth. These are my subjects, wretched and discarded. The deformed in my body are in my mind. These sideshow apparitions then shall be my honor, guard with vomit worn like metals on each ragged breast. For I have enemies about me in this fetid kingdom of the damned that I have chosen as my own. Wife, kid, nice lawn, and people magazine. An ordinary life. No matter. Let them do their worst for in this mildew sequin empire of the outcasts and the lost. The freak shall reign supreme. Eat dinner, watch TV, and maybe later go out for a beer. Hey guys, you hear that? He says he's a freak and wants to join the Supremes. Looks like Halloween came early. Hey you, Alice Cooper. Trick or treat. Trick or treat? Oh, I don't give. I don't want to encourage little boys like you to be approaching strangers after dark. You get so many funny people these days. And you, you know how it is with people. They're not always what they seem. Oh, I dig what you're saying, man. Ain't no good going by appearances. You gotta dig beneath the surface. And that's exactly what we're gonna do with you. Something put by to get the kid through college. Things at work are going great. Maybe next year a new car. Hey, Joey, there's another one of those alley we're at sleeping over there. So we'll fillet him later. Right now I'm gonna teach our freaky friend that this is a conservative district. Ugh. And we don't like anything abnormal around here. 
Oh, the abnormals I can handle. It's the subhumans that really piss me off. What in hell? Hell, what do you know about it? You and your fellow rodents prey upon the homeless and the weak and then go home to mom. Believe me, you know nothing about hell. Oh, God. Oh, jeez, no. But I can teach you. Ah! They won't stop running until they hit ocean. With luck, not even then. I hope I didn't frighten you too much. My friend, I've been met with things more terrible than you upon my travels through the world of rot and starlight. In fact, it seems that we are both fellow knights, brothers within this putrid, decadent domain of fly-blown shadows. I, sir, am a freak of nature and proud to be called one. Put it there. Uh, most people call me the Spawn. It'll do, I guess. So, uh, what are you doing here dressed up like that? I could ask the same of you. Who knows, perhaps our answers would be far more similar than you'd imagine. What do you mean? I mean, perhaps we were both men transformed, eroded by a fate's carrion bloated tide, made into something other than we were, made into freaks. The lies we had plucked from us by the claws of beasts condemned to haunt this roach-jeweled twilight world. Does that ring any bells? Perhaps. So what's your story? My story? What, you mean my origin? I come from somewhere dark, the, the mansion of my past, frescoed in blood. Cartoon wallpaper in the boys' room. Ding dogs. Oprah. With fiend-carved gothic doors I hardly dare open. See, once I had a rich, exciting life. I worked in undercover operations for the government, and I had a lovely wife and kid besides. All that got blown apart one summer's night. The hit was slick and organized, professional. Out into a new life, we're born amongst the splendid ruins of the city's underside, far from conformity. We're born a freak with no desire except to slake the madness raging in my soul upon the burning cognac of revenge. It didn't take too long to find out who'd been behind it, someone I'd tangled with before in my operational capacity. They called him Dr. Delirium, an insane scientist with a means to control minds or else destroy them. Seeking vengeance, I went after him, but in my rage, I was too eager and too clumsy. Ambushed, I myself was soon a prisoner of Delirium. The treatment he subjected me to was designed to turn me into a human vegetable. Drugs that made men into stumbling cattle. Terrifying shocks that wipe your brain clean in an avalanche of bells. He changed my mind around, but not in the way he'd hoped. I wasn't one of his obedient conformist drones. All my perceptions and reactions had in some way been enhanced by his experiments on me. I busted out. I get alas, all the odds are stacked against me. The warped demon who transformed me into the sinister grotesque has vast resources, while one whose story is as monstrous and unnatural as mine can expect little aid or sympathy from normal folk. I'm not sure there's such a thing as normal folk. Not round here, anyway. But it's not only you whose life got warped by demons. I'll do what I can to help. Thank you. I can't say what it means to find a brother in this gorgeous purgatory of scar butts and dead dogs. If you would help me, we must storm the Fortress of Delirium through subterranean routes I've discovered. We must both descend into that Stygian dark wherein we creatures of the shadow we find our only dwelling place, our only solace. Drink milk out of the carton. Call mom. Send out for some ice cream. Watch a game. Stretch? There. So, what do you think? It's unbelievable. You've built yourself a mansion in the sores? And where better for the likes of us than in these hallways? Ermine, what? Ermine, uh, I guess it said Ermine. Ermine rugged with rats, ger germs strewn with colored maggots. More than that is the pathway to my enemy. This way. We can't approach Delirium's fortress from above the ground. He'd be expecting that, unlike this route that only pale blind alligators know. Does he, does his place have defenses? You can't imagine. Microwave beams that will poach your brain inside your skull, and mind control techniques that have you doubting who you are. I still remember that exquisite torture. He dismantled all my dreams and then did neurosurgery upon my soul. It wasn't just my parents that he killed, he butchered my whole life. Your parents? I thought you said your wife and kid got... I said my family were killed. That bastard took out mom and dad as well. Do you know what that's like to have your loved ones taken from you? Yes, uh, yes, I guess I do. Lead on. I'm up for any ring of the inferno that you care to show me. Coffee percolating in the kitchen. Later on, a little Springsteen. A little meatloaf. Fridays we go bowling. Treat? We're in. My God, what is this stuff? These are the merest fraction... Of the psyche shredding mechanisms at delirium's disposal 
This is the cold oil perfume zoo in which he keeps the metal beasts that tear men's heads apart. We must go further, deep into the winding arteries that feed this heart of darkness. Hey! Hey, you! Looks like a couple of the doctor's special projects decided to go a walkabout. Don't take any chances. Let's just get them wrapped out fast. Wrapped up fast. Yeah! Watch out for their needles of nothingness. I'm sorry, pal. We'll take our brains unscrambled. Let's show them how real warriors of the abyss can revel in the maw of slaughter. Favorite armchair, favorite shows, the drone of mowers in the street outside. There, that's the last of them. Good, we have no time to waste. We have to breach the inner sanctum of delirium before one of his human vipers raises an alarm. Where do we find him? Where the dark is at its thickest, where the screens approach their loudest, where the rebel of man's sanity lies smashed and sundered all about. Here. Beyond these doors, the duke of all delusion and damnation waits. If there are doubts within your soul, then turn back here. Uh-uh. Not me, friend. If you're talking about damnation, then I figure you've got me along for the ride. Strunch! There he is, the destroyer of human souls, the one who took my family away, then tried to erase my memories of them. Say your prayers, demon. Tonight I shall end your reign of terror. Who, who, who are you? What are you doing here? Doctor's appointment at three, but roast on at four. Do you need help? Sorry. Do you need help? Thanks, friend, but no, you guard the door. I've waited too long for this moment. My maker and I are about to have a meeting of the minds with what I have left. What's this? Do I sense fear? Can it possibly be that the, um, the almighty delirium is afraid? The time has long since passed for someone like you to have feelings. Bzz, you're insane. Precisely. And I can't thank you enough for that. But let me try. Yeah! Yes. Sing me your tears of joy. A gun? I'd have thought a kingpin like you would be too superior for such trivialities. Dinner at 6. Try to council meeting at 7.30. No. Oh, God. Your lord's taking a bath. He felt dirty about creating you. He has no stomach for woman and child killers, and you know something, neither do I. Ha, 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 ha. Pow. Ugh. Freak, hurry up. Things are starting to heat up. Be with you in a minute, dear. Game time delirium. I spy with my little eye something that goes bang. wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. Ah, now isn't this just peachy? Your corrupt boys in blue. Please. I'll do whatever you want. Too late. I need my family. Too bad you killed them. So, doesn't leave you much to offer, does it? But thanks for asking. Smooch! Now, go crawl back, stanky black hole. Well, that's what it says. Now go crawl back, stanky black hole from which you came. Oh, I forgot. Send me a postcard when you get there. Crash! Bonnie, it's time we made a hasty retreat. Where's the doctor? Taking a power nap. Nothing to be concerned with. But what is are his hordes of mind-controlled henchmen. Delirium had them all under his thumb. Coppers, mafia lords, political personalities. This sanctum of his will be crawling with hundreds of zombies out for blood in about ten minutes. We need to create a clean path of escape. Then my revenge shall be complete. Eleven o'clock, a warm-up of Ovaltine and some ESPN Sports Center. At the Federal Health Services Department. I'm sorry to call you down here so abruptly, Miss Cabl Miss Colbisi. Uh, Miss Oh wow, Miss Colbisi. Your husband has escaped from the institution again, and efforts to find him have been unsuccessful. This is Miss Cabolsi, right? Or Miss Colbisi. I don't know, that's Yeah. We'd like your help in finding him. You've been very helpful in the past and we do appreciate it. I'm sure this isn't easy. No, it's not. I thought he'd be out of my life for good when I left him eight years ago. He just lost it when I told him I didn't want to have kids. I couldn't take it anymore. He's always running off. I'm telling you, his grip on reality is screwed up, but I guess you already knew that. Well, he's not my problem anymore. We were hoping you'd help us try and... I don't think so. He can rot the street for all I care. I'm sick of being dragged into his freaky dream world. Why don't you call his doctor or something? We have, but no one seems to be answering at Dr. DeLorean's office. We'll try again in the morning. Okay, freak. It's you and me now. I'd like to know what the hell we just did. 
You want answers? Fine. Here's the scoop. The whole insane gig. It's just a stick along with his wig and makeup. It just serves some purpose like your get up. Sounds kind of crazy, but it's all I've got. That murmur, that murderer delirium, he wiped out my family. Do you understand what that means? So yeah, I killed the fat slob. What are you going to do? Take me to jail? Go ahead. I don't care anymore. I'm not your conscience. You did what you had to. Tuck the kids in the bed. Snuggle up to the wife. All in a pretty good day. Focus? I've got my next target already picked out. I will. He, 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 he. Oh, excuse me. Oh, oh, no, there's there's some more, guys. I, I really do need to do this again. I'm not your conscience. You did what you had to do. I'm fighting a few inner demons myself. You reminded me to stay, yeah, to stay focused. And then he says, uh, focused? I've got my next target already picked out. Well, good luck. Hope you succeed. I will. He, 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 he. Issue 38, Mind Games. This is the last one. Oh, shit. Who the fuck is that? Nakuwale? Okay, the old man sits... Uh, Alright. As light breaks over the horizon, the guard looks up, feeling a bit annoyed. For weeks, not a soul has ventured through the gates, and the master expects no one. Another tourist taking a wrong turn. I wish they'd fix that sign up the road. The headlight's brightness masks the driver's identity. Excuse me, you've taken a wrong turn. The end is about a half mile back on your left. I've come to see the professor. He's expecting me. I'm sorry, but my logbook doesn't show any visitors tonight. Let me validate your ID before I call up to the house. I have strict orders not to disturb the doctor. Wait a minute. This card's expired. You'll have to come back tomorrow with a valid documentation. That won't be necessary. The guard's muffled screams stop as the crack of his breaking neck echoes through the leafless trees. Once again, silence blankets the moonlit evening as fading warmth from the dead guard's hand thaws a patch of icy ground. That was easy. Too easy. Debris lifts and settles as the doors slowly open. Chris finds himself unusually apprehensive, senses strain for every sound in the dead air. Warily, he assesses the contents of each dark corner. Okay. What the hell's going on here? I heard the doc was a little crazy, but what weirdo could live with this filth? His footsteps are muffled by the dust that coats the room. Cautiously, he navigates past the decrepit machines. Then, a sign of life. Warily, Chris eases his weapon from its holster. I knew I'd find that bastard here. In fact, it's only empty noise from the television. Chris breathes, a sigh of relief. The room is empty. Jesus, what a mess, and this guy's a well-respected doctor? There has to be something here, something I can take with me. Chris searches through the rows and rows of old videos. His orders were very clear about what he's expected to find. Each tape, as predicted, is similarly labeled. Anna, 1975. Anna, 1981. Anna, 1986. It's the tape already in the VCR, or nothing. As he presses play, the room goes momentarily black. Night envelops the city. A calm silence caresses its empty streets, broken by the maniac rummagings of rats and dogs and ghosts. The restless creature forages through mounds of debris. Searching for what will bring security. Vengeance. Peace. Good. Just where I left them. Some quick maintenance and they'll be ready for win. That slimy pig. Lying in some hospital surrounded by 20 guards. You sleep well, Jason. I need you nice and healthy so I can blow off your head. An eye for an eye, remember? You taught me that. Never surrender. Never back down. Kill or be killed. Hell's been waiting for this. Familiarity amplifies Spawn's intensity as he prepares, easily wiping away the grimy residue of months of storage and rotting rubbish. AK-830 Rocket Launcher. Oh, excuse me. AK-830 Rocket Launcher. I remember this baby. Blows holes through elephants. Anything. Used it on that Libyan mission. Worked like a charm then. Looks like everything's in order. Now all I need is... The final touch. Excuse me. The final touch. Preparing for war... You've no idea who your real enemy is. You're chasing a red herring. Before satisfying his curiosity about what's on the tape, Chris scours every remaining inch of the mansion. He finds no one. With my health's deterioration, I have ceased assembling my notes, and the neurology research has been forcibly terminated. Without this recording, I fear my, res my research will remain unknown. I must start at the beginning, at the root of my experimentation. I'm going to get a friggin' dissertation. My name is Frederick Wilhelm, and I was born in Geneva, Switzerland. As a poverty-stricken boy, I dreamed of becoming a doctor. When war engulfed Europe, I served as a frontline medic in exchange for training as a physician. 
In my fourth year of service, I met the woman who would forever change my life. Anna. Intelligent. Caring. Beautiful. I could endure the relentless barrage of ruined young bodies only because she stood beside me. After a year together, she did me the honor of becoming my wife. She means everything to me. Well, we can see why. As war ended, she suffered two miscarriages brought on by an unknown neurological disease. Her health then declined rapidly. I, a doctor, stood by helpless. My life would be meaningless without her. I then focused solely on studying neurology and vowed to save her life or die trying. Transfusions became mandatory. I demanded an increase in the frequency of donors. Nothing would stop me from saving her. Learning of my research, the U.S. Army invited me to head up their cybernetic simian project. I was forced to accept the offer, as their economic support was urgently needed if I was to save her life. They coerced us to move to the United States. The demands for immediate results on their project jeopardized her recovery. My sweet, beautiful Anna slipped into a coma. My Anna was dying. One morning, her heart stopped. Nothing could bring back its beat. Sadness filled my soul. She deserved a place as beautiful as her for, for her final rest. A safe place where I visited her all the time. I made a promise I would, <clears throat> I made a promise I would bring her back. Devoted to my Anna, I demanded extra assistance to speed up the experiments. I had to ensure my theories were valid before I could help my love. Believing that convent, um, okay. Believing that conventional weapons of war were insufficient, governments raced to create a superhuman soldier. After years of attempts to infuse humans with multiple bionic parts, researchers concluded that the human mind could not withstand the pain of the implants. Another vessel was needed. A simian was chosen, due to its neurological similarities to man. I was to unite the cybernetics with a gorilla, which was codenamed Cygor. Due to the ape's high pain threshold, I proved flesh and bionics could be fused. But the government demanded a superhuman. I had to find a way to transfer man's thought processes into the ape. A brain transplant was not viable due to the human pain perception problem, so attributes of a human mind were introduced into the ape in slow, calculated percentages, working up to an ideal 80-20 human-to-ape ratio. This interested me tremendously, for I knew if I could place a mind into, my, into a new body, I could keep my promise to my Anna, my lovely Anna. She would live again. I promised her. For Anna's sake, precision in my experimentation was mandatory. However, the government, while demanding impossible deadlines, made substantial cuts to my resources. Still, I concluded my re I continued my research rather <clears throat> with the same care and attention as always, using only the most advanced equipment and sophisticated subjects, making detailed notes in organized journals. When the Cygor moved of its own free will and lived without artificial life support, I knew it was time for my Anna. I promised her all my hard work was going to pay off. She would once again be with me. Days blurred into each other because I knew that soon Anna and I would be together again. I could feel my health declining, but nothing could stop me. Not now. That brings me up to date. I must continue my work. Anna depends on me. The television screen fills once again with snow, bringing Chris back to reality. Believing the tape is over, he rises to remove it from the VCR, but stops when the picture resumes. Help me. I've been lying here for three days. I'm weak. I struggled for days to reach the microphone. I cannot move my left arm or my legs. I've had a stroke. I cannot reach her. My Anna. I'm not ready. Not yet. The beast. At least four days have passed. I can't move. It will get... A thundering crash echoes throughout the mansion. A power failure shrouds the room in darkness. Chris remains seated, hearing only his own heart beating. Finally, the auxiliary lights flicker on. What are you talking about, old, excuse me, what are you talking about, old man? You, just who are you hunting? When? Why this? Why now? An acquaintance showed me how to deal with my maker. Dangerous advice, if you ask me. Do you believe every freak you meet? You've been hounding me for months. What are you, anyway? It doesn't matter. It's what you're becoming that's my concern. Your murderer did not begin or end with win. Killing him won't solve anything. In fact, his death would create even more problems. You're wrong. Till I kill that murdering son of a bitch, I'm never gonna rest. Now's not the... Excuse me. Now's not the time. He's too valuable to you. Without him, you'll never know why you were killed. Do you really think Wynn holds the power to have you killed at a whim? You just don't get it. Wynn made Chapel pull the trigger. No one else. Chapel took the order. Wynn gave it. You won't believe it. This guy's got a throne and everything. List buildings, too. Like that guy in the comic books. He flies, bends steel, and everything. Cool. The throne is made up of all this stuff. It's huge, man. Cool. 
When's my target now? He's first on my list. Terry, that traitor, took my wife, and now he's protecting Wynn's back. He's second. Have you ever wondered why they put you in the government's elite force? I saved the president, Cog. There aren't many like me around. Didn't that seem a bit too convenient? Look, you have something to say. Get to it. Because when you're finished, Wynn's still. Going to die! Ah! Ah! Please, 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 please don't shoot! Uh? Run! Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god! Hey, guys, I... Oh, screw it. Now, what were you driving at? That I was rescued by the president for some secret agenda? No, not the president. Those who serve him. Consider how much effort and influence a trusted group would have to exert if they decided to rid themselves of their leader. All the while, they'd be putting at risk everything they'd achieved. Years of planning might be required. The clandestine rendezvous, the convenient alibis. But what if something or someone interfered at the crucial moment? The vast resources invested in the mission were then wasted. Worse, the hidden conspirators couldn't eliminate the interloper. For now, he, uh, by which I mean you, Al, had become a national hero. At the same time, you'd become untouchable. If anything were to happen to you, the entire nation would want to know why. Their best option, then, was to bring you inside their ranks to keep you under house surveillance. You see, while they couldn't have anticipated the intervention of a bright young officer that first time, they could make sure you'd be nowhere, to nowhere near the kill zone for the next try. Trust me, Jason Wynn is just a small piece of a bigger puzzle. And you're a puppet, Al. At least you were. It's time you started thinking like a free man. Obviously, he dictates his notes on everything, so there should be a tape discussing the extraction formula. Or at least some files, a diary, notes, something. I can't go back empty-handed. As Chris swings open the door, the power resumes. Oh my, what the? Anna's half-decomposed body sits idly while precious fluids flow to her brain. The doctor forbade anyone, including the entrance guard, from entering his house. Her death was a secret. Jesus, this guy's a psycho. Due to her body's detour deterioration, the doctor planned to transfer her brain into a bigger, stronger human body. He promised they would be together again. I fear this tape will end before anyone will know of my outcome. My Anna must be protected. It hasn't eaten. It will escape. Chris stops in his tracks when he hears the doctor's frightened voice. If I die now, everything will get worse. I haven't been able to reach it. It will want my Anna. We have to kill it. Kill what? I know it has gotten free. Three weeks have passed. God help whoever comes here. It will be hungry. I don't. Then another blackout. Not again. I've got to find something here. Unbeknownst to Chris, the doctor struggled for another seven days before dying of dehydration. This must be it. Holy shit. For the first time in three weeks. Fresh meat. A soothing chorus of crickets sets the tone as Rosemary Blake begins her daily contemplation. Granny? Al, please, child, come in. It's been some time. I've been busy. I'm sure. The Lord must have many glorious duties for someone like you. Still, I'm grateful for your visits, no matter how brief. Now, please, sit with me for a while. Thank you. I do feel tired. Tell me, Al, is heaven what they said it'd be? I don't know, Granny. I haven't been there yet. But an angel did tell me your place in the kingdom was waiting. What you've done on earth has honored God. Bless you, son, for that message. I'm sure your entrance is imminent. The Lord needs souls like yours. You were a true hero. I thought so, too. But I was used. I still am. How about Wanda? Is she all right? Not always. She said a demon came to see her. Tried to convince her it was you, but she wouldn't allow it. She loves you, Al. Nothing would stain her image of you. And this man, this creature, attacked Terry. They're both scared, Al. Afraid it'll come back. They try and hide hide it from me, but I still sense it. Maybe you can help? There must be some way you can keep that evil man away. I'm trying. Thank you. Now come along with me. I want to so show you a picture of her little girl. Art Gallery. Oh, wow. It's really good. I like that. The amount of detail is just amazing. Incredible art. 
I like that one too. Things are getting a little funny though, I will say. Things are getting a little silly. Like you'll have stuff that makes sense and adds to the plot. And then you have like Sigor and the freak and like what's going on? What the fuck? We got too many cooks in the kitchen. What's happening? Okay, I remember that one. Yeah, I like that panel. That one too, yeah. That was it. With Spawn, legendary writer and artist Todd McFarlane unleashed his iconic anti-hero on the world and launched the most successful independent comic book in history. Spawn is a hero unlike any other government agent. Al Simmons was killed by his own men. Resurrected from the depths of hell, he returns to Earth as a warrior spawn guarding the forgotten denizens of the alleys of New York City. <clears throat> as he seeks answers about his past, Spawn grapples with the dark forces that return him to Earth, battling enemies and discovering unlikely allies. As he learns to harness his extraordinary new powers, he begins to grasp the full extent of what brought him back and what he left behind. Spawn Origins Volume 6 contains the stories and artwork that helped create the Spawn legacy. Featuring the awe-inspiring art by fan favorite Greg Capullo and stories penned by Spawn creator Todd McFarlane, also is included a story co-written by comics legend Alan Moore and an issue penciled by comics hotshot Tony Daniel. Each volume of Spawn Origins series includes six previously released sold out issues of Spawn published in an all new design and format. Exclusive bonus content also includes cover galleries and behind the scenes art. Each volume also includes a classic Spawn cover reimagined by master Spawn artist Greg Capullo. Great stuff guys. And that was issue 33 to 38. So what's next? I'm gonna give it a minute to load up because I have all this stuff on a HD. Can't just put everything on an SD. I was actually told to store data on an HD and have everything else on SDs. So, all right, Volume Seven. Let's get to that next week because I promise you guys like volumes of this a while ago and i think i can do it not right away it's 164 pages so it's going to take me a while but at any rate this is the grim lord and i am out for grim's comics corner with spawn and we'll see you for more